Hey there, everybody, and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to create your own application, whether it be for Android, iOS, Windows, or Mac, and you're looking to do this without code, completely free, stay tuned. I'm covering Flip a bit, which is actually one of two platforms I've been able to find that allow you to make a mobile application for free without code. Now, for those of you that are skeptical, the other platform is AppGyver. You can check out my channel. I have tons of resources and reviews, and I'm actually going to be loosely comparing the two in today's video. Video. Now, I do want to give credit. This was actually recommended to me by a viewer in another video. So they commented on one of the videos I uploaded and asked to do, for me to do a quick video and kind of highlight what my thoughts are on this application. So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. Now, first, we're going to go to their website and I do want to walk over a couple of things. Now, before we do that, I'm going to put a link to this video in my description. Uh, this individual here, Doc Williams, does a really good video kind of comparing these two. Um, so I don't want to do a direct comparison because that content's already out there. Now, I'm not affiliated with this individual, but did just want to go ahead and let you all know. Now, one big difference between Flipabit and AppGyver is AppGyver is web-based, whereas Flipabit requires you to download the program. So download at your own risk. I can't find what I was downloading, but at one point I got some kind of a notification from Windows Defender. However, I didn't get anything when I downloaded the application itself. So again, just download at your own risk. Now, first things first, we're going to look at pricing because obviously I'm saying it's free. So what exactly does that entail? You'll see for free use here, we have unlimited apps which is already huge so across the board you get unlimited apps regardless of the package you choose you get public sharing and then you're going to be able to publish to the app stores and you're going to have the flip a bit screen so i'm not going to go through and read each of these but the general idea is for free you can actually build apps and publish them to the app stores so compared to other platforms out there where some may charge for android and then charge even more for android and apple you can just publish completely free. And then if you want to remove the splash screen and get analytics, you would go for the developer account. And then for the business account, you get the team support and live update service. Now going down to included in every plan, you'll see unlimited apps, access to forums, flip a bit IDE, cloud build, companion app, and templates and samples. Now this individual here, Doc Williams, actually had a really good point, which I didn't think about, but the templates and samples is not included in AppGyver, at least at the time of filming this video. Now, another thing to note here, and this was actually a comment in the Doc Williams video, someone made the comment that AppGyver had been bought out by SAP, so they have a backing of a pretty large organization, so who knows what development works will come, but right now, you really just have the ability in AppGyver to duplicate your applications. So if you don't have anything to start with, you have to build everything from scratch. So we're going to go over that in a little bit. You have your FAQ down here. And then the last thing that I think is actually pretty cool is the showcase. So you can see Flipabit is not forcing you to use, let's just say, 10 different templates and customize those. You get to pretty much build whatever you want, which is really impressive. And then you have this learning se section with knowledge base of so your docs and forums. And then your flip a bit overview, which has the IDE, um, or I guess what we'll say is the flip a bit editor, so the UI builder. Um, so I misspoke there a little bit. But I mean, honestly, it's a really cool interface. So I'm really excited to go ahead and jump in. And I will do a more detailed overview. So we have flip a bit opened here. Now, if you haven't opened Flip a bit previously, then I'll show you what it looks like uh, just really starting it from scratch. So if we were to open Flip a bit, I'm using Flip a bit 2.0. You can go to the download page on their website and we will start off with a blank project and then we'll jump into an existing project like the one I was just looking at. So we click once, you'll see it's going to upgrade the project to a new version and we just have this white screen. And when you click on page one, you'll just see some information over here. So let's break down this builder just a bit, bearing in mind I'm still a bit new to the platform. So starting up here, we have what would be an AppGyver our components. You click on one to essentially add it. For example, if I want text, I click there. You'll see this giant box and we could type in, hello, this is my app. Now, one thing I already love about this platform is the ability to drag this wherever you want. And if you click down here, you actually have the ability to enable or disable this snap feature. So if I want to put this in the middle of the screen, I just move until 
I get this little icon. And then if I want to put it in the middle on both axis or axes, then you'd basically just move it around until you see it actually snap into place and it's right there. So if I decided I want this to be near the top and this box, maybe I decide, you know what, this box is too big. We just resize it. So to do this in AppGyver, at least again, I'm going to try to stop saying at the time of filming this video, which that should just basically go uh, as you would expect. Like there are going to be improvements at the platform, but right now in AppGyver, everything's stacked vertically. So it's not like you can just drag something over to the left and put it right here. You have to kind of do the manual work and figure out, okay, what's the position and location and then set that. Well, in flip a bit, you just put it wherever, and then you can actually edit the coordinates over here if you're interested. And you'll see you have so many options for rotation, for margin, for padding. So right here would be the your basic default properties in AppGyver. This would be in the edit settings in AppGyver. You have all of these different colors and effects that you can do right here. And then your interactions and performance, and then draggable details you'll have the text options here, which is just an overwhelmingly large amount of stuff that you can do. More information here, and then your database connections. I'll cover this a little bit more in a little bit, but there's a couple of really cool surprises for me with this flip a bit platform. So we have all of our components up here. So let's just toss a couple in here and make a really, really basic and probably not very attractive application. So if we click on this and we'll have our YouTube video um, or our YouTube URL. So let's try to use this Doc Williams video, for example. We will just copy this and then we will paste in the URL. And you'll see if I, I'm assuming if you click play, it would immediately start playing. So that's actually really cool. It just gives you the video by itself, which is awesome. So we'll do that and we'll move that. And since we're not directly affiliated, let's see if it works with our channel. So, we'll try Tyler Talks channel, which is my channel. I don't know if it'll render that since it's a channel and not a specific video, um, but we can see if that'll load. And it doesn't look like it's gonna pull it up. So we will just try to go back and let's see. We'll just paste in the video that we had previously. Now let's go ahead and add in a couple of other really, really quick things here. So let's try adding in a map and we'll put this here and you'll see it saying can't load maps correctly. We don't have really any information, but you can use the Google API if you're interested. I really don't have anything to put in here. So let's just see if we could just put in like 100, 100. I don't know what exactly we would need to fill out, but we're just trying to get something in general here. So let's resize this just a bit. And then we're going to add in a couple more things. So maybe we wanted to add in a table. Actually, we may want a calendar instead. So let's add in a calendar. So you don't need to drag and drop. You just click it and it basically just puts it right there. So we'll move this over here and then we will add in Let's see, what else could we add? So I love that they have this AppGyver equivalent of a web view. So if we move this over here, you do need to make sure that the URL has the full URL. So HTTP semicolon slash slash, and then we'll just go to google.com. And then immediately Google pops up. And then lastly, let's just see, let's just say we need a chart. So we'll just throw a random chart in here. And then, <clears throat> What we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna click on run and we're gonna do the preview real quick. And then you'll see right here we have the application and it's kind of loading everything a little slowly, but you'll see we have Google pulled up. We could type in stuff right there. So these are just the default trending searches in Google. We can scroll up and down. You can zoom so you can still interact. This chart's basically just by itself. We have this YouTube video, which you we're gonna be play. Um, this hasn't actually rendered anything, and I'm not seeing the component that should be here, but we can just close out, and you'll see that's really the application, so super easy to use. And you can adjust the size and location of all these components. Now, a couple of really cool features. So first, when you click here, you'll see you can do an HTTP request, which is really easy to set up, or at least looks like it is. You also have the ability to do a recording, 
but some really cool features. You have your variables right here. So JSON, arrays, date, time, string, etc. You have your local storage and then add mob, which is a huge question I get on tons of different videos. And then some other options here. So if you were to click on add mob, you'll see you have your sample banner right here. And all you need is the app ID, add size content, position, and keywords. So really, really straightforward, which is, again, a question a lot of people have. And at least as far as I'm concerned, you can't really do ad mob easily in AppGyver. I've read there's no technical constraints, but right now, from what I've seen, you can't do it. I'm sure that's coming, but really nice that this is already a feature here. And if you click here, um, so you'll get these additional options down here. And right here, if we were to click on this, you'll see what we have, what I'm assuming is the IDE. I'm not quite sure, but it is cool that you can actually access all this, this code here, essentially. So I'm not quite sure if you can edit. I'm going to assume you probably can, and this will probably corrupt the application if I start editing this. Um, but let's just try to delete some of the content and see what happens. So I'm not seeing any changes to the application itself, but again, not quite sure what would be happening or if I'm deleting the content or what's even showing down there, to be honest. Just really cool that you get access to it. Now, you also have a couple of other choices. So when you build, you can do Android, iOS, Windows, and Mac. You have your run option up here. And then again, all of the properties and options for the different components here. Down here, you have quite a few different options. So you have your snapshot, dark mode, show device, show placeholder, enable snap, uh, show bounding box. So again, landscape mode, just all of these options and zoom and also your preview options. So we can choose different device types to view this as, which is also really, really cool. So that covers the basics. So now let's close this out because I probably already messed up the application. And then we are going to go to this website and we're going to go to their showcase and we're gonna to try to download one of these apps. So let's scroll through and find something. I really like this golf course app and you'll download the PMA file. Now I tried downloading something, it may have been something like this and it was an EXE. And if I'm not mistaken, this uh, Windows Defender did not like this file. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if it'll do it again. Um, but when I originally clicked this, I, I don't know if you can see this because of the screen recording software, but it says Windows smart screen prevented an unrecognized app from starting. So it may not necessarily be any kind of problematic application, but this does look like a new platform. So maybe this is just not recognized by Microsoft. However, if we click on this PMA file and you have to do this when flip a bit is closed, you can click OK and then you get this application. Now, one thing I haven't figured out yet is when I go to preview, it's going to put this sideways. So I'm not going to spend too long doing this, but I just want to show you this is basically your screen. You can interact with it here, but we can actually also interact with it when we click escape. We can interact with it here as well. So if we click this play button, you'll see this video moving and you can actually see you can interact with this video while the video is playing and do these different rotation options and interact with the video again while it's playing. So it's it's really cool. And then you can choose backgrounds, colors, so you can see this is changing backgrounds, the overlay, the texture. So it's just really cool to be able to see how this is working. Um, again, so you'll see texture choices. It looks like you can, uh, I guess, scroll up or down here. Um, to add in different colors. So this is just a really cool way if you wanted to see how you could implement graphic effects on what I'm assuming is just a video. So we can see this kind of like what would be an app guy for the component tree. And you can expand each of these and see the different options that are on the page. So you'll see the blur options, blur titles, opacity, background, geometry, rotation. So you can click into each of these and see the value, the slider, and when you click on, let's just see the value, for example, we can click over here and see the specifics to what exactly this is doing. And then we can click on the slider, for example, and see what this is doing in these settings as well. So you'll see a ton of cool options here. And then you could change this to be whatever you want. So you'll see we have this video here. So 
my understanding would be if you wanted to keep this application as is and just swap out the video, you in theory should be able to swap out the video file itself. So that's a pretty cool option if you wanted to maybe have some kind of, a, let's just say a fitness app, and you want this application to be here, but you want to be able to rotate and zoom in and out or something like that, then each page of your app could have this built in. But again, tons of different options. So it's just a really easy way to go ahead and get started. So make sure that you have the ability or authority or whatever you want to call it to use whichever one of these. So I'm not sure if these are free for commercial use or how that works. But again, it just shows you how powerful and robust this platform is. So it's a really, really interesting platform. I'll probably be doing more videos on this in the future, but I hope this was helpful getting started. So to be honest, if I had to compare this to AppGyver right now, just as feature rich as this is, I would definitely say that I'm probably going to start using this over AppGyver for applications moving forward. But I would love to hear your thoughts. Drop them in the comment box below. Which one do you like more? What kind of videos do you want to see moving forward? And um, hopefully we'll kind of open it up and see what what you all are into all right so hope you enjoyed i'll see you all in the next video